All right, next. Next, shochu. Shochu, this is actually our, is this gonna be our last shochu session? It is. We're, we're gonna keep talking about shochu throughout the summit, of course. Um, it's gonna come up as we look at other international markets and whatnot, uh, but this is gonna be our last shochu-centric uh, session mm -hmm. uh, for the summit. And so our shochu pro, our resident shochu pro, Christopher Pellegrini, is, has brought along his uh, partner in crime, uh, Mr. Stephen Lyman, who has been on the show before. If you go back and listen to our past episodes, we've got a, had a couple episodes where Mr. Stephen Lyman has joined us, um, not just to talk about shochu, but Japanese beverages, uh, looking at um, his book uh, that he uh, published last year, looking at Japanese drinks. And we've got them join us here today to look at emo shochu, or often referred to as sweet potato shochu. So we'll go ahead and pop over to see those guys, and we'll go ahead and get started. Christopher. Hey there. Are you out there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome. Hello, guys. Hey, how you doing, Sebastian? Doing okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, good work so far. What are we, three quarters of the way through this amazing, uh, you know, 30-hour event? So Marathon. A <laughs> little bit more of this absolutely essential information that we need to get out to the entire planet. Exactly. So, Give us some of your energy. Exactly. That, that's, why, that's why we dialed you in here. <laughs> uh, always a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Yeah, um, and I, you. as you know, Stephen is here with me. Hi, Hello. Stephen. Hi, from Ichiki, Kagoshima. Yeah, he's down, he's down south at the distillery right now. So we got, okay, you're coming, we you're got him off his off shift. <laughs> Excellent. They, 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 let you, they let you out for an hour. That's right. I, I get to skip my lunch today and, and <laughs> Sake Summit instead. Aww. <laughs> we That's appreciate so you making some you. sacrifices for us. That's right. No <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, it, what we wanna, I want to give you guys all the time that you need. Um, for those who don't know Stephen, author of Japanese Drinks, he's been deeply involved in the world of uh, shochu for a long, long time. He's going to tell us about Yamato Zakura and the sake, that, uh, the shochu that they've been making down there. Um, we're going get to a, get a tour. We're going to get a, a little bit of insight into that process and what he's been up to. And we're going to learn about why, why you should care. Uh, mm -hmm. He's going to walk us through that. All right. Absolutely. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, gentlemen. Um, we've got a little video to play as well, too. You guys go ahead and get us started. Let us know when you want to let that roll and we'll get you going. We'll do. I'll count, count you in. Thanks a lot, Justin. All right. See we'll you, Sebastian. You shortly. All righty. Um, so we're off, and I'm here today with the author of Japanese Drinks, Stephen Lyman. Um, and he also happens to be a kurabito at Yamato Zakura Shuzo down in Kagoshima. And thank you for joining me, Stephen. Thank you, As Chris. usual. Um, can you tell us about your day? I know you've been up for a long time already. <laughs> sure. Um, today's actually a light day. It's Sunday uh, for those of you in in uh, in America. In yeah. You watching? You know, it, it's the future. It's tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So on they, Sunday, it's just two of us working. Yeah. And so it's um, it's not too too busy, but there's still work to be done. Uh, sure. but for example, we don't have any uh, sweet potatoes processing today. Uh, that'll that'll start again tomorrow. But the weekends are lighter. So this morning we we started a little before seven, washing rice, uh, and then that's for today's koji making. And then mm -hmm. uh, after that we had to uh, break up the yesterday's koji kojified rice uh, to to put it into the small wooden boxes um, to to keep maintaining the temperature because obviously if koji heats up too much it doesn't. Uh, behave as well. And, uh, and then right after this, actually, we're going to be moving it into the small boxes. We, we do this morning breaking up process to, to all that hardened rice gets loosened again into single grains rather than big clumps. And then after, after I'm finished here, I go back into the distillery and we, we break up where we put the, the rice into all those little boxes. Oh, so, uh, yeah. What, yeah. Uh, when, when there's more to do, when do you start? Do you start earlier? Yeah, we start at six, sometimes even 530 um, with with the uh, actually the first step is still washing the rice and then after that you we wash the potatoes so usually we do the rice before breakfast the potatoes after breakfast and then by about 10 11 o'clock we move on to the other parts of the day which is steaming the potatoes steaming the rice all those sorts of things and then in in between you're fitting in bottling bottle washing packing shipping distilling <laughs> stirring the pots cleaning the distillery 
it just sort of never ends. So really the days are usually about 14, 15 hours. Um, they're pretty civilized though. You have a, lunch, a breakfast break, a lunch break, a dinner break, but breakfast. usually finishing about 10 o'clock at night. Potatoes for breakfast? Uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much, too many taters. Right. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, just so that people are clear, this is Yamato Zakura. Um, and I see you have a bottle behind you off right. over your shoulder. Um, Yamato Zakura, and I have a couple <laughs> bottles behind me as well. Um, that's, is, that's further can, away than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about this uh, maker and you know your, sure. your experience there? Yeah, so Yamato Zakura is the smallest uh, all handmade shochu maker in Kagoshima. There are over, 100 and, what, over 110 active distilleries right now in Kagoshima. Yamato Zakura is all handmade. Uh, Tekan Wakamatsu is the fifth generation Toji. You'll meet him on the video that we're going to watch. Um, he's, he's been very, very kind to me and letting me come and work with him uh, every year for actually the past eight seasons. Uh, and um, Yamato Zakura, the main brand, which is, is this bottle, is the white koji sweet potato shochu made with uh, local Kagoshima rice and uh, Kogane Sengdong, and uh, also from Kagoshima. So this qualifies as a Satsuma shochu. Right. Uh, which is the sweet potato shochu from Kagoshima made with local ingredients. Um, and it, it's based in Ichiki, uh, which is um, a small town. It's only about 7,000 people. And I heard yesterday Toyonaga-san claiming that Hitoyoshi had the highest density of distilleries per capita. Oh. But Ichiki is seven distilleries in a town of 7,000 people. Oh. So, yeah, I think, I think we have him beat. Although it is... Ichiki yeah. didn't work with... Uh, with Kushikino. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so it depends on how you count, I guess. Municipality, but what, what all of the distilleries on the Ichiki side, because this is where the good aquifer is, this is where the, the good well water is. Mm -hmm. Really nice water. So all the shochu here has a distinct style because of that, that's part of the terroir, is the, is the water, so. Um, yeah, and then you're holding the, the purple sweet potato, Beni, Yamato Zakura Beni, uh, made with uh, Satsuma Murasaki, so purple sweet potatoes from Kagoshima. Unfortunately, the potato harvests have been rough the last couple of years due to a blight with the pur purple sweet potatoes. So a lot of the makers aren't making it right now and Tekon's among them. It just, there aren't enough potatoes to go around for the purple. Huh. So this so. is a collector's item is what you're saying? Uh, could be. <laughs> There's still <laughs> nice. plenty of it here in the distillery to sell, so. <laughs> oh, okay, that's good to know. But yeah, um, it didn't make it last year either. So it's, you know, two years in a row without any amount of- No kidding. Being produced. So it may end up, you know, running short in the future. Wow, you heard it here fo first, everyone. Go, go out and get that, um, go and get that purple, the Benny from Yamato Zakura before it disappears. Okay, well, excellent. Thanks for the brief introduction to Yamato Zakura, what you do on a daily basis while you're working there. And I think what we should do, um, just because, you know, Wi-Fi being what it is, what we have is a video for everyone to watch. It's actually a distillery tour of the smallest uh, distillery in Kagoshima. And we're gonna hear directly from Tekkan-san's own mouth. Um, and you know he's, he's guiding our very good friend, Maya Ailey, who if you watch the, the Mugi versus Whiskey episode from day one of the Sake Future Summer, Summit, you will have seen her um, interviewing the, the president of, of Kumasa Jozo. Uh, she, she follows him around the distiller. We hear so much about the way he thinks about the process. It's a very cool video. Stephen and I will be um, right back with you at the end of it. But uh, please take in this, um, this really nice short tour of Yamato Zakura Shuzo. Please roll the video now. Zakura Shuzo,上流酒だから、あの、
それでこだわってるんですか手作業とか、えっとね、手作業にこだわってるわけじゃなくて本当は物理的に言うと,うんと機械で洗った方がもしかしたら効率がいいし、うん、あの誰でもできるんだけど、まあ、この後の工程とかいろいろこうお酒作り全部こういろんなことも積み重ねてできていくのであの一番最初のファーストステップ一番最初の工程に苦労したポイントを持ってくると。あとあとこう最初で苦労したんだから手抜きたくなくなるでしょ、はい、そのセルフマネジメントとしてここに苦労ポイントを持ってきてるっていう<笑>ところですね、はいはいまあ、でもね実際に言うとお米の状況によってあのコンディションによってあと気温とか水温とかによってこのあと麹を触ったりお米の蒸し具合を確認できるのでここで微調整したりっていうところで。細かく、えー、それを感じ取れる汲み取れるっていう意味でもまあ本当はメリットがあるんだけれども大変は大変<笑>はいこれをまずはいで次に、えー、と蒸してお米を蒸しますここでこ,こういう布あの、うん、布貼ってこれに1回1 5 0キロ3 0キロの米5体1 5 0キロが1回の払いだしこれ鹿児島県の中でも相当少ないんじゃないかな宇宙の仕込みで1階が1 5 0キロの腹出しなんて同業者に<笑>引かれるというか笑われるぐらいのちっちゃな規模なんだけど<笑>まあ1人でオペレーションするのはこれは限界ですねはい、はい、これを蒸してでこの,これの台がこっちまでやってきてここであのお米をここでこぼしてこのこのお米のベッドの上でああここでやりますね高齢して手で混ぜて入ってます。で、翌朝、切り返しちゃいますよ。ちょっと今、麹の木の蓋で、切るやつ、切るやつがそうか。切るやつないか。これか。うん。切るやつないごめんなさい。<笑>まあ、これはちょっと買ってるやつ、洗う前ですけど。で、この箱で、麹を作る。はい。最初ここでこう工事オペレーションするんだけどどんどん熱が上がってくるのをあの木の桶で全部盛り分けて小分けにして温度をコントロールしていくっていう工程をしてて工事を作るんだけど、まあ、ここまでも、まあ、あのお米を洗って蒸して工事の温度管理までするドラムっていう機械があってそっちの場合は大抵ドラムで作るんだけどうちはこれを、まあ、セパレートしてアナログでオペレーションしてまあ、手作り工事というのでやってるのはまあ売りなんだけど別にそのこっちが素晴らしくて機械作りがダメだとかそういうことじゃなくてお互いにあのメリットデメリットがあるのでまあでも麹を使って作る蒸留酒なんだっていうのがすごく大事なポイント、うんはい、麹が正直ってなんかいう言葉を手監さんがおっしゃってましたあ麹要はねとよしょよしょでさっきあの温度を見るとか手触りを見るとかなんなら一番最初にどう洗うかとかどれぐらい水につけるかとかこれぐらいでいいかなとかまあこれぐらいにしておこうかぐらいの自分のその緩みみたいなのが出るとまあそれがね麹にもろに反映されてるだから面白いことにねだからラッキーはあるかもしれないけどやっぱりかっていう方が多い<笑>ラッキーはあるただよかった危ねえってのはあるけどうわーや,やっぱりや,やっぱダメだったかの方が多いそう,だからそういう意味ではすごく工事はその時々の自分のコンディションだったり<笑>これは今日できた工事を亀に入れて、亀はね、こっち見てもらうと分かるように、こういうふうに水が入ってくるこんな感じ。この亀は何年前からとか,らとかこれね、江戸末期のものもあれば、明治大正のものもあって、まあ、とはいえ、まあ、100年オーバーだね、全部ね。アンティークですよ、もう。うん、全部ハンドメイド。要は、多分、日本の和亀じゃないかと言われてるんだけど、うん。こういうふうに修理とかしないとそうそうそうそう、実際はね、始まる前にね、もうほらさっき言ったアンティークだからさ、うん、こう
、もう指入ったから使えませんってわけじゃないですし毎,毎年毎年全部チェックするでも作れる作られてないですかない、うん、そうこれ小かったらすごい金額するもう,もう大きいくらいいくとなんか外の庭のオブジェになってますよね,なんかこれってすねあと最近新しくこうこの亀の焼酎を始めるところは中国系のその麺みたいな太い,太いリムの大きなさリムの太い亀になってるね、うん、この中に米とあ麹米と水とあとリキッドイーストスターターのイーストを入れるじゃこれは今日なのであんまりブクブク1日目2日目例えばこれ3日目一番勢いがあるのはこれかなちょっとキミカルリアクションがすごく見れてるんですねだっけ抵抗不発酵って英語でなんて言うのあれ。マートポペラのファーメンテーション。マートポペラのファーメンテーション。<笑>おお。ちょっと上上がちょっと蓋をしてた感じだったから。うん、そうそうそう。クローティングしてんだ。普段これぐらいの蓋の感じにして。私少しは空気が抜ける。少し空気が出るみたいな。うん。まあ、こういったところにあるほら、目に見えない候補が落ちて、何かしらインフルエンスするっていうのも、多分ゼロと思うだって、その日本酒から考えると、信じられないわけ、こんな発酵層がさ、うん、むき出しでさそうです、ね、安全にさ、ファーメンテーションするって、それはなんでかっていうと、そのほら、暑いでしょ、暑いし、殺菌も入るかもしれないけど、のは、焼酎の麹菌がクエン酸をアシッドにつけるとパワーの状態を作ってるからバッドバクテリアですが早いですねっていうのがだけどシボットのそのアシッドサワーこっちアシディックアシディックアシディックなのが最後までインフルエンスするからキャンノットドリンクでしょだからディスティルをしなきゃいけないなるほどよいしょこんな感じお結構泥がそうそうもう,もうもうこんなリッチソイルな状態でくるわけでさこれがねすごくね外国の人たちにとってねその芋じゃん芋、うん、スイートポテトって結局、うん、まあ特にこの色も白いからさちょっとじゃがいもっぽくポテトだと思われるわけよあ色白いんですねそうそうそうでこの泥をきれいに洗ってその傷んだところとかこの端っことかを切ってで蒸して虹の復元料使うここはみんな知ってるんだけどそのこの泥だらけのものがこのこう掘り,掘りたての証拠だよねリッチソウルな状態だからだけどこれを、えー、と,とてもこれがすごくなつかな豊かなことだって伝えたいんだけど新鮮なイングリディエンツなんだって何度も言ってきたんだけどみんなポカンなのよ外国の人なんでかっていうとストックフードだから芋なんて新鮮であることのメリットなんかねえじゃん何言ってんのお前みたいな感じになるわけポカンなのだけどねその白石君の言葉を借りるなら、まあ、果物に近いっていうこの僕らが言ってるそのスイートポテト芋っていうのは焼酎用の芋っていうのはただのストックフードのスイートポテトとかポテトじゃなくてむしろ果物に近いんだっていうフルーツに近いんだっていうことをね認識させてあげないとフレッシュイングリディエンツの蒸留酒ってあんまないのよメ,メスカルとかさあとフルーツブランデーのいくつか。芋焼酎は特にねフレッシュイングリーデンツがすごく大事なのねこれなんていう芋の種類ですかこれ,線がそれ一番よく使われるんですかそう一番ポピュラーなやつだねはいでこれを洗ってますこれでこ,これでこの格好してる<笑>でこれこうカットしてでおばちゃんたちもカットしてダブルチェックして大体2時間半から3時間ぐらい洗うこの一袋が一。えっとね、これね、千八百キロ、あ、これの半分を洗う。ああ、二時、二時間半から三時間かけて洗うのって、まあまあしんどいやん。朝から。そうそうそうそう
これがないと始まらないでしょ始まらない、うん、しさっきの工事もだからあ,のあ,のあそこで僕はいい加減な工事を作ってたら俺もこういい加減でやるのああそういうことだからパスザバトンだ全部のタスクが最初からしっかりしてるそうそうそうそうだから1週間後の俺に失礼みたいな1週間前の俺に失礼だしあそこで適当にすることは1週間後の俺に失礼バックトザフューチャー<笑><笑>もお分かりだと思うけどそのもの見たことあるでしょ、はい、そのものみとうちがあれ,もあれでも傷だと思うけど圧倒的に綺麗でしょもう色が普通こういうのは黒がベロベロ上がってくるのよ正直こんなまず上がんないですよねなぜなら俺が泣きながら上がってくるから<笑>すごいですね本当にク,クリームシチューみたいなコンポタージュみたいな色が、うん、これ何日目とか4日目ぐらいで何日十何日間10日間中10日間中4えっとね確かもうちは上流は11日目でするんだけど、うん、全部の工程がちょっと他のくらいのタイムスケジュールより少し遅めだから米1に対して芋5使うから米1変えるだけで何も変わんねえじゃんって思われるかもしれないけどだいぶ違うんだよ、うん、な,なんならだから5がさっき言った芋だから5がのコンディションがあるければ全然ダメだめだ5が例えば紅芋だったらまあ全然変わるし、うん、まあ赤根だったらまた紅茶の香りがするしだから芋の種類でお酒の種類もアロマのフレーバーも変わってくるからそこも面白い仕込みに入る前に芋が今年の芋がどうだああだこうだとかよくないとかそういう情報とか,なんか仕込みに影響してくるんです、うん、影響する,響するどれぐらい作るかにもいいしうちはそんなに影響しないなんでかっていうか使う量があんだけだから、うん、他はあれの10倍あれが10個十個全部いいコンディションかって言われたらうんかもしれないですうちは1個とか2個でいいからそれぐらいだったらあれスモールデリットもあるけど思ってば大変だと思う、うんまあ、ただその代わりすごいコストがねコストメリットがあるかもしれないし、うちが2つ、3つ使うと、もうこの10個、20個、袋を使うときは、作る量が少ないから、うんまあ、同じ土俵ではないんだけど、それ、農家さんから情報が入ってる、他の先に仕込みが始まったクラブとか、他にあの、農家さんからも来るし、その買い付けてる業者さんからも来るし、他のクラブからも来るし、結構、まちまちだね、大、う、隅、ん、と何冊で違うし。あとね、結局ないないって言って後々出てきたりとかそれもあるし、うん、ちょっとよく分かる、まあ、振り回されないように、まあ、目の前のことをまずはしっかりやっていくっていう感じかな、うん、まああまりにも数がないものは早めにこうちょっと確保したりとか対策を話し合うこともするけど、うん、さっき言ったひその新鮮なやつがやっぱり欲しいからあのそこら辺をこう上級リアルタイムでこう情報を共有しないとなかなかいいものがあるかこれがもう上流準備ができてこれを上,上流できるってどうやってわかるんですか一応もうそのさっきから10日間とか11日決めてるのでその大体決めてるので UT に決めてるので大体ね確かにねその香りとかあのすごいいい香りがするピークよりもちょっと下ったぐらいで、ね、ああじゃあ、うん、経験経験経験でも大体,大体10日から11日ってなってもうちょっと早くてもいいかなと思うことはあるけどまあうちは一応10日とか11日でやってるそれを例えば8日目とか9日目でやってもいいと思うそれをまた蔵の違うものを違うところだと8日目でやってるところもあるとかたまに聞くこれ1期1期しかない一期しかないで減圧とか上圧とかあうちはね上圧だけうんのみうん、でこの形にこだわったりなんでこういうなんか細いちょっと細くないですかそうです細い細いいろいろねここはね各,各蔵元の数だけ蒸留器があるみたいな感じで、うん、それぞれに何かしら一回勝負なのね焼酎って欲もあるしだからこのシングルディスクっていうのは一回勝負でどのくらい38度から25度でほとんど出すんですかそう、えっと、大体2年から3年で出して出すただ最近は今年山形ぐらいニュープラスチックで出したんですけど
それはその2年寝かせて出してるものを1年未満のものと8年報酬を混ぜて出してるそのアッサンブラージュじゃないけどブレンドね簡単に言うと、うん、そのいくつかの蒸留酒を持ってるわけじゃなくてそれをこう,こう調整して香りとか味とか膨らみとかちょっとイメージとかを膨らませて商品化するのも蒸留酒の面白さなんだよねでそのフランス人の人たちにすごい教わったのが僕10年こしを飲ましたの11年こしと12年こしうちのなんか一番オールベストのバッチ、うん、どうだろうそしたら「うん」<笑>なんで「ワイ」「テンピアス」こう「ワリウスイカ」は「サウジでそれは「ビコーズ・テンピアス」だから<笑>古いってうん、その紹興酒と一緒だったそんなのなんで10年なっていうのの,そのあれがないその時間を時間確かに時間大事なんだけど時間10年という価値でしかない自分が10年出したものが明らかに違うっていうのがあるんだからそれはそれでいいんだけどただ10年ってことだけでそのフラウンされても、うん、うん刺さらないなと、うん、区切りだけがいいそうそう、うんって言われたときに、ただって言ってヒントとして、さっき君はニューバッジを飲んだけど、さっきのニューバッジを済ましたと。だから、このニューバッジがある。ニューバッジをこんなに美味しく作れてて、かつ、今みたいに。実はね、美味しかったと。美味しかったと。ただ、10年の腰を持っているだけじゃなくて、君は10年の腰を持って、当たりを使用すれば、こんなに美味しく作れるんじゃないこの幅が、君の蔵の魅力なんだよ。それに気づいてなさすぎるって。なるほど。それはすごく大きな発見だった。すごい大きな気づきがもらって、外国の人たちの視点っていうのはやっぱり良くて、スティーブンも来てくれて、クリスも来てくれてさ、いろいろ交流することで気づくとか、さっき言ったシングルディスクとか、そのフレッシュイングリリエンスとかさ、ああいうのもさ、実はさ、それまでは当たり前すぎて、自分の中では特にセールスポイントだと思ったんだ強みだと思ったんだ彼らがこうやって、これが強みなんだってことに気づいたのね。今日も一発勝負って、名言がどうでしょう<笑>やっぱね、その外の視点とか外の人たちと交わるようになってから、自分の焼酎も向き合い方も変わってくるし、<笑>やっぱり、ね、考えるようになったすごく。まあそれまでも考えてたんだけど、ね、やっぱり考えてこその酒造りだなっていうのは。うん、なんか、クラゲみたいな。そうそうそうそう。これがね、うんオイルなのうんそれを取るんですか取るのもあるし逆にこれは全部ただこれはフローティングしてるだけだからこの中にはオイルがこう漬け込んでるわけでこのオイリーなのがその焼酎の面白さなんだよね蒸留酒には確かにオイル他にも出るんだけどそのオイルなも,も,ものがオイルなまま飲むっていうのはとてもなんかユニークうーんお湯割りにして美味しいなんだよねオイルって言ってもなんか芋の成分の芋,だ芋,芋よりも多分米とかだと思うよもちろん芋もオイルがある,あるしあの、ね、まだねそこは分かってないのこれはどっから由,由来されてるあのオイルなのかっていうのはねちょっと分かって分かって 100% これですってわけじゃないっていろんなインフルエンスが麹由来もあるし米由来もあるし芋由来もあるしでこのオイルがラップで取るんですねラップで取る<笑>その多すぎても酸化して味わいとしてあのアフラッシュになることもあるしでオイルがなさすぎるとなんていうのエキストラみたいなエキストラ A みたいな個性キャラクターがない味わいがちょっと足りないそこら辺をどういうふうなバランスで出すかっていうのは、まあ、一つさっき言ったスイングルディステルだからこそちょっとのオイルの処理でキャラクターが変わってくる表情が変わってくるっていうのは、うん、あえて料理あのろ過しない人もいればすっごいろ過する人もいるしそれはもう本当にみんなのフィロソフィーこれだけある、うん、原料はシンプルでけ,けどその処理はすごいデリケートでできてくるものもすごくシングルディスティルでさっき言った一発勝負で
ポンって出るんだけど出てきたものをじゃあどう処理するかっていうのはとてもまたデリケートあと貯蔵とかもどのぐらい熟成とかもされるんですか、うんそ,れえっとね、それもね、えっと、新種が出だすこともあるし、えっと、うちは最長で十何年寝かしてるのもあるし、うん、それは単純で、ね、あとこう亀に寝かしてるのもタンクいくつかぐらいあるんですか。一二一二いくつだろう。一二三四五六七八九十十四十四十五十六十七十八十九十八十九うん。十四。おかげさまで空いておりますので、承知は作れます。今年は大変でしたね。何のところか。みんなのところ大変だけどね。まあおかげさまで山桜はね。えー、と本当にこのコロナのタイミングで逆に少し跳ねたかなっていう感じはするかな、うん、ニュークラシックもそうだったし、まあ、要はニュークラシックもね結局そのフランス人の人たちと出会ってここに構想はあったんだけど商品にしてなかっただからあれで2週間で作った本当にもうあったものをそうだから発想はここ23年なんならまあチームたちと出会ってニューヨークに行ったりとか放送として4年ぐらいあったのかな45年ぐらいあったんだけど5年と2週間で作ってそうだからこのみんなとほらこういうふうに出会ってつないでもらったバトンがあって気づきがあって、うん、気づきがあったのはたまたまこのコロナのタイミングで商品にしたってすごく、えー、と今の中畑に近い上流種だと思うので、えー、ぜひ鹿児島の、えー、ランドスケートを感じてください <laughs> This is my speech. That was a phenomenal inside look at the distillery. And just so, there's so much in, in what Tekkan san was talking about. And, and mad props to Maya Ailey, who just asked all the right questions. So I don't know like, what, what really s- s- stuck out for you, Stephen. Like you, you live this. Right. Yeah. To me, I, I really love how Tekkan's personality comes through. And also, you know, he's such a character. He's a really unique human. And, and I think that that really comes through. And he, you know, he really does embody that shokunin spirit, right? That craftsman spirit. You know, he was living the life in Tokyo as working in advertising when, you know, he got the call from his family to come back and start running the distillery because his father wasn't feeling well. And he, you know, he struggled with that decision. But once he made it, he threw his back into it. And he's just, you know, really become. You know, such a、uh, you know, dedicated craftsman. And, and, you know, he, one of the things he told me the very first time I came to work with him was because I, I was always asking him why, 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 each step, right? And he just said to me, look, you know, I call it the sadistic system. <laughs> and the reason is, is if, if I start cutting corners on small things, I'll start cutting corners on big things, you know, and、I'll, the, the quality will suffer. You know, and now he's over the last eight seasons, he's added steps or deleted steps that have improved efficiency or improved quality, right? But it's still virtually all done by hand. There, are, I was thinking about it this morning actually. There are two pieces of equipment that use electricity, other than like the vacuums and things like that, because we,、sure. we are on a vacuum, <laughs> you know, right? Carpets, but、um, you know, he. He has just two pieces of equipment that, that aid with electricity, and everything else is just you know, manual labor and steam, basically. You know? So it's a, it's a really, really interesting process. And you know, he, his, his philosophy has also evolved as, I, as I've known him. And you know, he's really、um, matured. And I think he expressed that where, you o k n when w I met him, he really hadn't thought much about shochu outside of Japan. And now、mm-hmm. he's definitely thinking about that. So、that's a big shift in his thinking. But he's also had an, he's always had an outside view. I think that's why he was open to me coming and working for him. You know, I might have been the first foreigner to ever visit his distillery, but a year later I was here working. You know? And you know, I, I think a lot of other distilleries probably would have just said, you know, no thanks, we just don't want the hassle, where he welcomed it.、Um, you know? And I think his time working in advertising in Tokyo really gave him a global vision. Right. I mean, when I was living in New York, he, could, he would recommend restaurants or bars to me before I even knew that they'd opened. 
like he had his finger on the pulse, you know? So he really does um, anything. He thinks a lot about all of these things. He's, he's got, you know, he's got nothing else to do other than make his shochu and sell his shochu. So he spends all of his time thinking about it, right? So every year I come back and he's got some new angle, some new concept, and it's always inspiring and it's always surprising. So I really, I think that came through a little bit on the video with him, uh, which I really, really appreciated. And, um, you know, the, the interesting thing he said to me, actually, the first day I was here this year, we always have these long conversations as we're working because I, I think he's kind of lonely sometimes. Like a lot of the work he does solitary, right? And so when I'm here, it's sort of like a chance to, to chat, you know? Yeah. And uh, so what he said to me, he said, you know, shochu is really, a, it's, a, it's a natural process. You're using yeast and koji, right? But that natural process is um, resisted by technology with the still, right? You're introducing something completely man-made to this traditional fermentation process with distillation. And that's what makes it such an interesting contrast, right? Because mm -hmm. we're talking about a handmade traditional product that's using technology, right? That, that's, that was developed for this purpose, obviously thousands of years ago and the stills have evolved and you, you saw his still, his still is pretty rudimentary. You know, it's all stainless. Uh, it's not very big. It's uh, not. Yeah, I thought it was funny when Maya said, why is it so narrow? And I was like, there's not a lot of room in the distillery. <laughs> yeah, <it's true. laughs> Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, I think it's older than his father. His father just turned 80 this year. So that's an old still, you know, it's been, it's been around. And um, so, but just his, the way that he thinks about these things and he, it's just like, it's, it's peeling an onion. Every time I'm here, I learn more, mm. you know, and there's always some new aspect and some, you know, new part of the process. I was like, ah, so that's why we've been doing that for the last eight years. <laughs> The sadistic system. I like it. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's full on backbreaking work and, you know, it's, you can clearly see it's handmade shochu. Tezukuri shochu is a thing you can label your shochu as such, but what's required to meet the requirements for that labeling standard? Yeah. So really tezukuri for, for shochu is specifically that you're making your koji by hand. That, that's what qualifies it for tezukuri. So you're, you're, adding the koji spores and you're hand mixing and you're using those little wooden boxes and you're in that koji muro, that koji room, which has the cedar walls, mm -hmm. um, which is to, to maintain the, the heat and the humidity in that room. And, uh, and he mentioned the drums, right? There's, there's these kawachi drums, which are used to make koji in much larger batches. And, and most distilleries have those, even if they make handmade shochu, they'll also have a drum to make uh, machine made uh, Koji as well. Uh, but, you know, and he's right, there's not necessarily a benefit to doing it by hand, other than the fact that it's craftsmanship, right? You know, those drums are designed and they have got all these, now they're, you know, they're computerized, basically, there's all this techn technological assistance that can maintain perfect temperature and humidity to get a perfect Koji growth every time. And when you're doing it by hand, and you know, he's adjusting knobs in the, on the steam and the, you know, the humidity, in that room, you know, to, to increase or lower the temperature. And do you see the wooden columns that are coming out of the ceiling? Those are actually vents that he hand opens and he'll open them just a little bit or wider as he wants to let some of that heat and humidity out of the, mm -hmm. of the room. So, you know, he's making all of these micro adjustments, you know, throughout that koji making process. And, and it's not that it's better, it's just that it's traditional, right? It's really carrying on tradition and, and you know, being a craftsman. Um, and I thought it was funny when he was bragging about how there's no black bits in the, in, in, in his second fermentation. And, but there's a reason for that, actually. Um, I've worked in a lot of different distilleries, you know, I've gone and worked for a day or two in several different distilleries around Kyushu. And a lot of them don't clean their potatoes nearly as well as he does. And, uh, and then they don't necessarily cut more than the ends, because the ends are bitter, you usually want to remove the ends because of the bitterness. But you know, we're, he taught us, taught me, and the other distillery staff know this, is, you know, if you get a big potato, you got to break it open to make sure there's no rot inside. Sure. You've got to look for little soft spots and cut those away. You look for any dirt that's residual and you cut that away. So there's a, you really get a, a, a gleaming white potato by the time you finish. And so you end up with very little of that residue. Now in other distilleries, they want that 
sort of, it does add character. It's a it does, right, yeah. But Yamato Zakuda is actually a very clean, uh, I'd say medium body sweet potato shochu. Um, you know, and he's, he, he makes a, a pretty consistent product, although I do notice year by year variation. Sure. Um, and, and he was talking about um, one shot, right? Shochu is a one shot deal, basically. You know, you, you, whatever comes out of that still is what you've got, you know? <laughs> and the only, the only thing that you can do to fix it, if it doesn't come out well, right? Well, there's a few things you can filter, you can age, or you can blend. Right. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of distilleries will get rid of their mistakes by blending it into other products until you don't notice the mistakes, you know, uh, but with such small batch production here, you know, he doesn't you don't have that. that luxury. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, and, and I, I agree with you when I, when I sip Yamato Zakura, the standard, especially, it really is such a smooth and balanced sweet potato shochu that does have the depth of character, but doesn't have you know the that some of the um the aromas that are that can be really like surprising for people who are not emo drinkers mm -hmm. um but uh yeah you can just sip it straight all afternoon long so, yeah it's a really really easy easy drink and it, for me it's the you know it's become my home shochu i mean i there are other brands that i love but when i just want like a nice comfortable glass of shochu it's Yamato Zakura, without question yeah I, I often try to support one of his uh, contracts, one of his accounts here near where I live in Tokyo, but maybe it's a combination. It's a combination of me and a couple of other customers. We have them sold out all the time. So I'm constantly sending, not constantly. I sometimes send photos of the webpage saying sold out to tech line. He's like, <gasps> he's like <laughs> so he has to send more. He has to call the guy up and say, apparently you need more. Um, but uh, yeah, just absolutely beautiful shochu and a, a question that came up Stephen, during um or perhaps uh just before the video is mm -hmm. the the type of rice used in making sweet potato shochu maybe in particular but in general in the shochu industry uh, you know tekkan's using good rice what's this what's the story what's the average yeah so as i understand it tekkan's using a food grade rice and that's actually a it's a level below sake rice but it's a level above standard alcohol or animal feed rice, right? Okay. So a lot of distilleries will save money by using uh, broken grains or, you know, broken rice. And that actually, that's preferred in awamori production in Okinawa because they, there's more surface area for the koji to grow, right? The black koji down there. Um, but in Japan, or I'm sorry, in, in Kagoshima, a lot of distilleries will use tai, tai mai, so uh, long grain rice. Uh, so m most of the handmade distilleries will use a, a Japanese rice uh, and Tekkan uses, like I said, uh, local Kagoshima rice and it's specifically Koshi Hikari. And then he's, um, he has a brand called Hikari, uh, which unfortunately I don't have a bottle of right now. It's got the Maikaki on it, the label is the, is the apron. And that one is actually made with, uh, with, with fresh rice. So uh, with, with new rice rather than stored rice. Uh, so that, and that one is very, very rice forward. You can just taste that rice koji in, in Hikari. So that's another great drink of his. My personal favorite is actually uh, Takumi, which uh, is a very, very lightly filtered uh, shochu he releases every December. Um, I did have a bottle of that, but I'm actually using it to stand up my computer now. So um, I can't show that to you, but that's a, that's a lovely drink. That's probably my favorite of his products. But the rice, yeah, sorry, to get back to the question, it really is, um, about different grades. And I know Nakamura in, in Kirishima up in uh, Northern uh, Kagoshima, he uses a very, very high grade of rice, uh, even, even higher than what Tekkan uses. Mm. Uh, and there's a re so there's a reason that Nakamura shochu costs a little bit more it's because his ingredient cost is more, his, his mash bill is higher. It's very interesting. Um, and in terms of the sweet potatoes, is there any effort that does does Tekkan check the, the level of sugar in the suit? Does he do a bricks check or anything? Uh, it's a great question. His father was taking care of all of that work until last year. So I never really had an opportunity to sort of spend time in their little laboratory or do much with regard to distillation because that was his father's purview. But his father retired uh, this past off season. So now Tekkan's doing that work. So I imagine later in this visit, I'm going to learn those kinds of things. So I'm not actually sure if he does. I, I think he does. Um, with the sweet potatoes, though, what's interesting is because he's such a small producer, you would think he has a hard time 
getting access to good potatoes, but he's built right. such a good relationship with the local uh, wholesaler that the guy will often set aside really good potatoes for Techcom because they have such a good relationship. Oh, wow. And that's just, uh, what would you call that? Um, emotional intelligence, right? That's, uh, you know, social IQ or whatever you want to call it. So it's, it, you know, he's, he's definitely good at working those sorts of relationships um, because he needs to, because he has no power. You know, Hamada Shuzo is across the street. It's one of the largest distilleries in Kagoshima. It's to in the like, whole country. I opened yeah. this door in front of me. <laughs> I'm actually in the Gengkan, in the in the entryway of the office. It looks good. That's a really well well appointed Gengkan. It is. It is. Um, but if I open this door right in front of me, I'm looking at Hamada Shuzo, which That's of course, crazy. you know, it's it's one of the largest distilleries. And here's Yamato Zakura, which you know, almost fits on a post postage stamp in relative size. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's that's fantastic. Um, and I loved it at the end of the video. He they went outside to the tanks, and he, he didn't know how many tanks there were. <laughs> that's so tech on. <laughs> that reminded me. One thing he talked about early in the video is about how the koji condition depends on his condition. Yeah. And when he's making hikari, that's a 17, 18 hour day, but also waking up in the middle of the night to check koji temperature. And he doesn't have like an app on his phone to check from home. He's got to come back to the distillery. And check the koji temperature overnight to make sure that it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's much harder to grow koji on new rice, on fresh rice, than it is on stored rice, because you're you're dealing with the the water content of the grains is can be so variable in new rice. So, um, you know, he I've I've been working with the, the the night work that we do. The last thing we do is we hand mix those boxes one more time before we go to sleep um, to cool to cool down the koji. I've, I've so many times been working with him where he falls asleep standing up as he's doing oh, wow. it. And he's falling asleep when I'm there doing half of it for him. You know, I can only imagine what's happening on other times. So he's, he is physically exhausted by the end of the season. So, um, so, and his condition does matter. And so I'm not surprised that he doesn't remember things like how many tanks do you have or, you know, sure. those small details that he aren't, aren't front of mind day to day during the season because he just doesn't have time to think about anything else. He's also aging in clay. He said he's got yeah. he's got kame with shochu in it as well. Is that a relatively small amount? Yeah, I think um, usually he's got between four and eight kame. They're about four hundred liter, six hundred liter pops. I think um, maybe four hundred, a little bit smaller than the than the larger Chinese ones that were mentioned before. And that's uh, and that's what uh, takumi, which I mentioned, is a is a, a clay pot aged uh, version, usually aged for one or two years, sometimes blended. Um, but that's a very, very small part of his production. Most of it's aged in those enamel lined stainless tanks, like you saw outside of the distillery. He's got a few tanks inside the distillery, which is where he keeps his older shochu as well. We're talking about the eight or 10 year age products. And I think those are great. You know, he, he was saying that just because they're 10 years old, there's no merit to that, but there's, it's so mellow and smooth. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to the day when he decides to bottle that, you know, because it's just a delicious drink. But he was, I guess he was being humble, which is is you know a good thing yeah absolutely i mean that just a yeah just a phenomenal inside look at the way that you know that sweet potato shochu can be made sometimes is made he does a hundred percent handmade shochu which is incredibly rare these days in kagoshima if i'm not mistaken and you know I, but I'm, i am also curious about you Stephen. what do, what do you f find to be really special and unique about sweet potato shochu. Ah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I think he, he touched on it. It's the, it's the freshness, you know. Ah. Rice and barley are storage grains, right? Kokuto, uh, which is a delicious, you know, drink from Amami Oshima here in Kagoshima. Uh, you know, it's using a, a refined, not re an unrefined sugar source, right? So it's something you could store and you can, you can use later. With sure. these sweet potatoes, they start to rot as soon as they come out of the ground. I mean, the reason they don't wash them before they get to the distillery is that that dirt is actually protecting it. That's got all the microbes that are keeping that potato healthy, right? Mm. So, you know, the fact that it's so fresh, I mean, those potatoes come out of the ground and they're in the fermentation, I would say within 48 to 72 hours of harvest. So it's, it's you know, the, it's the, the fresh ingredients, I think are really, really key point. And then also, you know, he touched on a couple of different varieties, but there's what, about 50 different varieties of sweet potatoes that are used to make sure too. Right. And all of those drinks have different character. Yeah. You know? And then your, your choice of your of white, yellow, black koji, sure. you've got 
fermentation temperature, you've got duration of fermentation, distillation shape, all that, you know, still shape, all that sort of thing, aging. There's so many decisions. Right. Come up with a huge variety of, of drinks from, from this essentially one category of shochu. And then you've got the 50 plus different shochu ingredients, right? It just goes on from there. So it's a, it's a rabbit hole for sure. It is a, it's an absolutely immensely diverse category in the shochu industry in the, well, Hey, in the world, in the world of spirits, shochu in general is incredibly diverse. But then if you just look at sweet potato shochu, it's, it's ridiculous on its own. I mean, the variety of, of aroma and flavor that are being produced these days, especially the last five, 10 years is just absolutely bonkers. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and Tekkan, Tekkan basically focuses on a few key areas that he can do exceptionally well is my understanding of the products that he, he puts out. Um, but you said this year's, and, and the Shinshu is different every year, right? That's and what, what's your take on this year's Shinshu? Cause I know you love yeah. Shinshu. <laughs> yeah, Shinshu is not my favorite. Um, it, you got so much of that fusel oil and all the, you know, the heads and the tails in that. And what Tekkan's done is he's taken the Hondare, he's taken the hearts, right? So it's just a delicious drink, uh, which really surprised me to meet a Shinshu I actually can drink. I can't wait. Can't wait to try it. Yeah. Well, this has been absolutely mind blowing. And I think that this video right here with the help of Tech Kansan, with the help of Maya, with your help is going to be one of the go to resources for learning about sweet potato shochu for years to come. So this is fantastic. Thank you for your time. I know you're busy. You got to get back into the distillery. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, let's let's send it back to the studio right now so that they can tee up their next video. Thanks, Steven. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Hi, Take care. Guys. Right. Hey, guys. You there? We are there. How are you gentlemen still with us? Yes, we are still here. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. That was fantastic insight. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, they're just... Indeed. I, you know, we had a couple of sessions yesterday as well, too, where we were able to get kind of a little bit of a peek inside, you know, the process. Uh, but over the last 24 hours, the insight that we've been able to get kind of into the actual, like I said, the process, the, the nature of being in the distillery and what that means and what it means to produce a product uh, from there. I, each time I look at this and I keep going, why, does, why did this not exist before? Why is this not just readily available? Um, and I, I'm just super, super excited that this, you know, this could be an opportunity to be able to put that together. And so another huge thanks to, you know, to Maya Ailey and to Tekkan Sang um, for um, being on board with that and helping, helping support that. Um, Steven, how long are you going to be uh, camped up there at the uh, distillery there? Um, I'm here for 10 days this year, a little okay. bit of a short visit. I've, I've stayed here for up to nearly a month um, in the past, but uh, I have other commitments yeah, this absolutely. year. So. But I will get to spend Thanksgiving with the family for the first time. I actually ordered a turkey and I'll be cooking Thanksgiving dinner on Thursday. So that'll be That's so awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Very special. Uh, very special. Very special. Where's, um, I was, what's, I'm just curious. So you, you spent so much time invested in the category as a whole, just in with Emo Shochu, what's got you excited right now? What, you know, when you're, of course, you know, what do you, what do you get excited about when you're in there in the brew? What just from your personal experiences? What, you know, it's, it's the, from that? Some, something that you miss, you know, is, is the, the aromas and the sounds. And it's just, a, it's a, it's such a, you know, almost magical experience, you know, smelling the fermentation, you know, the koji and the yeast doing their jobs and it. It's just these beautiful aromas. And then you run the still and that completely changes the aroma of the distillery, like mm -hmm. immediately, because it's such a small space, yeah. right? And, and then, you know, for me, you know, I, I've got so much on my plate all the time. I don't feel like I have a lot of time to relax. You know, I'm always busy with the next, you know, meeting or whatever, the next deadline. And when I'm in the distillery, working with my hands, knowing that I'm making something that people are going to enjoy, all of that just washes away, right? It's, it just lets me, yeah, just clear my mind and, yeah. but also be mindful, you know, be focused and just think about what I'm doing. And then I'm always struck by the fact that every single decision, even I make is going to influence the final product. So when I'm holding a potato in my hands, as I'm cutting, you know, the ends and looking for rotting spots and things like that, every cut I make changes the character a tiny bit. 
right? And, and just thinking about that as I'm working, it, there's a great deal of satisfaction to try to do that work the, you know, the best I know how and always try to improve year by year. Yeah, absolutely. And then how do you, I mean, it's, it's not something you can do in an instant, but I mean, that's so crucial to, you know, just the nature of, of this beverage you know, going out and sharing that with somebody, what's the, when you, when you bring a bottle of Yamato Sakura someplace and you got it and, you know, you bang, it's on the counter, you know, what are the first words out of your mouth? What is, I don't want to say your elevator pitch, but like what, it, that, that investment, I mean, there's probably, there's that personal side, is that what you're talking about? And then just telling somebody what it is, but in, you know, a few short sentences or, in, you know, just mm -hmm. summarize, what is, how do you, how do you express that to people for the first time? Well, I, I just, you know, I say this is Yamato Zakura, a sweet potato shochu from Kagoshima, from, you know, small handmade distillery that I'm fortunate enough to be able to work in every year. Um, and I apologize because there is probably a little bit of my sweat in that bottle. Because uh, <laughs> it is hard work. Fortunately, through distillation, you know, you're not going to taste any. We can. Uh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That's why, that's why we really need distillation. It's not about raising the alcohol, temp, <laughs> the alcohol percentage. So, <laughs> <laughs> excellent excellent steven thank you so much always a pleasure to have you on the show um, great thank you thank I really you for having appreciate me. You making time uh and i'm i, I feel very lucky we kind of we caught you right in the middle of the season here um great timing when when the world permit will come and uh, visit you down in kyushu excellent look forward to it thanks a lot really enjoyed it excellent steven, thank you very much yep. christopher another fantastic session thank you so much Thank you, gents. It's 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 been it's been a number of rounds. We got a couple more rounds left. Um, we have we've gotten in our shochu. We're going to keep talking shochu for the next couple hours here and there. Um, but this is going to be this is the end of our, you know, our core shochu content. So thank you so much for for closing that down. In style. Ended on a top note. I'm very pleased. <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, you gentlemen, you guys have a great afternoon, um, and we'll be catching up with you again here very soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Take care.